Let the joy of the Lord let it rise. Oh, let the joy of let it rise. Oh, let the praises of the let it rise. Oh, let it rise. I'm not seeing the joy here. Come on, express his joy. Let the joy. Oh, let the joy. Let it rise. Praise is over, King. Oh, oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, oh, let it rise. Somebody sing, oh. Now let your joy rise. Let it rise. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, praise him. Put us beautiful hands together and praise the Lord. Let the glory, let the glory of, let it rise. Glory of the Lord. Let it rise. Praises of our King. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord, let the songs of rise. Let the songs of the Lord, let it rise. Praises of our King, let it rise. Somebody lift your voice and say, Oh, 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 oh. Let it rise, let it rise, let it rise. Oh, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise. Hey, let it rise. Come on, sing, let it rise, let it rise. Hey, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise. Oh, just wave your hands and praise Him. Let it rise, let His praises rise. Oh, hallelujah. We bless your name, your praises rise. Let it rise, hey, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise. Now put those hands together, come on. Oh, let it rise, hey, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. Shout, let it rise. Oh, yes, give him praise. His word of this. Let it rise. His healing is rising. His praises, his anointing, his glory, his power, and his joy. Let it rise. Let it rise among us as we praise him. Let it rise as we worship. Let it rise as we lift our voice. Let it rise as we hail him. Hail Jesus here this morning. Invite him, tell him, Lord, you're welcome to rise. Rise. Oh, let it rise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His presence is rising here. I mean, it has risen. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 let it rise. How many of you are on God's side this morning? Say, I am on the Lord's side. I am on the Lord's side. If you don't say it, it means you are not on God's side. <laughs> say, I am on the Lord's side. And tell somebody, let the person feel it, that you are on God's side. And we always fight from the... Don't give me a wrong song. <laughs> we always fight from the perspective that we are already winners. And we are on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. 
I am on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. We give him praise his word this morning. Oh, just praise him. Just praise him. Just praise him. Hallelujah. We are on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. I am on the Lord's side. Because his praises has risen. His worship has risen. Oh, there is healing here. There is joy here. There is favor here. There is blessing here. There is anointing here. Hey, hallelujah. Somebody put your hands together. Oh, forever and ever, my God, you are good. Somebody sing. Forever, my God, you are good. Oh, forever and ever, my God, you are good. Forever. Somebody sing. Hey, forever and ever, my God, you are good. Forever and ever, my God, you are good. Adolfi, who is on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? As he raise a voice in praise. I say, who is on the Lord's side? Oh, are you on the Lord's side? Oh, as he raised a voice in praise. Oh, forever and ever, my God, you are good. Somebody sing. Forever and ever, my God, you are good. Now sing it. Who is on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? Oh, as he raise a voice in praise. I say, who is on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? As he raise a voice in praise. I say, who is on the Lord's side? Oh, are you on the Lord's side? As he raise a voice in praise. Come on, sing. Who is on the Lord's side? Oh, are you on the Lord's side? As he raise a voice in praise. Oh, forever and ever. My God, you are good. Oh, forever. And ever, my God, you are good. Now put us hands together, come on, and worship Him, and praise Him, and lift Him, adore Him. Hey. I say, who is on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? As He raise a voice in praise. I say, who is on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? As you raise a voice in praise. Oh, we worship you. We praise you. This morning, we lift you up. As you raise a voice in praise. Hey, come on. Worship him. Praise him. Lift him up. Hey. As he raise a voice in praise. Hey, I said, who is on the Lord's side? I am on the Lord's side. Are you on the Lord's side? I am on the Lord's side. As he raise a voice in praise. I said, who is on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? As he raise a voice in praise. Oh, I said, who is on the Lord's side? I am on the Lord's side. Are you on the Lord's side? I am on the Lord's side. As he raise a voice in praise. I said, who is on the Lord's side? I am on the Lord's side. Are you on 
the Lord's side. Are you raise a voice in praise? I say, who is on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? As he raise a voice in praise. I say, now sing, who is on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? As he raise a voice in praise. Say, who is on the Lord's side? I am on the Lord's side. Are you on the Lord's side? I am on the Lord's side. As he raised a voice in prayer. Are you on the Lord's side? 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 Every disease is bowing. Oh, every situation bowing. Oh, I am free in Jesus' name. I am free by the power of the blood. I am on the Lord's side. I am on the Lord's side. I am on the Lord's side. Come and sing. I am on the Lord's side. 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 Hey. I am on the Lord's side. Come on, hey, lift your hands and say, I am. I am on the Lord's side. Hey, I am on the Lord's side. Oh, I am on the Lord's side. 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 Oh, who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? I say, who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? Oh, I am on the Lord's side. 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 Lift your hands and say, I am on the Lord's side. I am on the Lord's side. I am on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Oh, are there people on God's side this morning? Oh, as he raised a voice in praise. The enemies will bow. The enemies will bow. The enemies will bow. Every enemy, every sickness, every disease. Every situation, every cancer will bow, will bow. As we raise our voice in praise, the enemies bow. Oh, yes, I am on the lost side. As we raise our voice in praise, they that be for you are more. The day that are against you. Those that are around you. Those that surround you. Every time you stand, the Bible says there are great, there's a great cloud of witnesses surrounding you. Your witnesses are more than those that stand against you. As you raise your voice in praise, the enemies. You see, every tongue that has risen against you will bow. Every tongue that is rising against you will bow. As we raise our voice in praise, the enemies will bow. Those people that have stood against you, situations, sickness that has stood against you, as we raise our voice in praise, as we raise our voice in praise, in praise, the enemies will bow. As we rise, as we raise our voice in praise, the enemies. I am on the Lord's side. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for us, who can be against us? As we raise our voice in praise, 
The enemies will bow, will bow down, will bow down. The enemies will bow, will bow down, will bow down. Every enemy bows at the mention of his name. The name scatters, it scatters, it reproves, it heals, it delivers, it saves, it delivers, it saves. Oh, the name, 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 the name Jesus is above every other name. The name Jesus is above, it is above every situation. The name Jesus. The name Jesus, the name Jesus, the name Jesus. Demon shatter at the mention of the name Jesus, at the name Jesus. It breaks yokes, it delivers, it brings peace, it brings joy. It set the captives free, brings resurrection. Oh yes, every enemy, enemies will bow. As we raise our voice. As we raise a symphony, as we raise an anthem, and we say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. As we chant the name Jesus, as we mention the name Jesus, the name Jesus, the name Jesus, the name Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, let it go into the hearts, into the mind, into the soul, into the spirit. Where you cannot go, just send forth the name. The name goes, it works, it heals, its power is still the same. Oh, Rabba Oh, Rabba It works. That name works. It works. It has the ability to work. It works everything. It works. It works. It works. It works. It works. It's working on your behalf. <coughs> it is working here. It is working here. It is working for me. It is working for you. Yeah. It is working. It is working here. Yeah. It delivers, it heals, it suits its sorrows, heals wounds, delivers. Oh, Rabba Basukanaya, this morning lift your voice and worship him, worship him. I ande raba ba bora kasuta la ba ba ye. I ande i ande i ande i ande riba ba suya. This morning worship him, worship him. The lamb that was slain, the blood that was shed, worship. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. There is only one name. There is only one name with the power to say. With the power to say. There is only one name. There is only one name. Somebody want to sing there is. There is only. Oh, only that wonderful name. Oh, it saves and delivers. There is only one name. 
Oh, there is only one name with the power to say. With the power to say. Somebody want to sing, there is only one name. Oh, there is only one name. Oh, 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 oh. there is only one with the power with the power to say somebody wanna sing with the power with the power to say oh, oh, oh. there is only one oh, oh, oh. with the power with the power to say Sing a ka da ka da ka Aka His champion is And he reigns Forevermore Forever Oh somebody wanna sing forevermore Forever Oh, sing, I can't, I can't, I can't. Ah, he's champion. Oh, 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 for it. Oh, 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 for it. Oh, this morning, just worship him. His champion, and he reigns forevermore, forevermore. He reigns forevermore, forevermore. Oh, we worship you this morning. Oh, Rama Masuka, just lift your voice and worship him. I told his name, he's worthy. We exalt you. Oh, we exalt your name forevermore. Oh, you were worthy this morning. He and the love of Basuka Taya. Lift your voice, just worship him. He's worthy. Oh, Rabba Basuka Rabba Baye. Oh, Yande Riba Baye. He and the the atmosphere oh, shifts now. Oh, chains be broken, break, Holy Spirit. Oh, heaven open, heaven open. Everybody sing atmosphere. Atmos, come on, shit. Chains be broken. Break now. Holy Spirit, come now. Heaven open. Heaven open. Everybody lift your voice. Let's sing. Atmosphere. Atmos, shit now. Chains be broken. Oh, break now. Holy Spirit, come now. Heaven open. Heaven open. Now lift your hands. Let's sing atmosphere. Shifts now. Chains be broken. Oh, break now. Holy Spirit, come now, heaven upon, oh, heaven open. This morning the heavens are open, the heavens are open, the heavens are open, the heavens are open. He's pouring down his blessings, he's pouring down his anointing, oh. Oh, 
Sing, I got his champion and he reigns forevermore forevermore oh sing a card sing a card a card a card he's champion and he reigns forevermore Forevermore, sing our God, our God, our God, our God, our God. He's champion, and He reigns He's reigning, he's reigning here, I got, I got his champion. And he reigns, and he reigns forevermore. Forevermore. And he shall forever and ever and he shall reign forever and ever he's reigning king and he shall reign He's champion, and he lift your hands wherever you are. Let's sing it together forevermore. Oh, forevermore, and he shall reign forever. He's reigning, King Jesus. He's reigning, mighty Jesus. He's reigning, Master Jesus. He's walking in our midst, Jesus. Come reign, Jesus, Lord. Come reign, Jesus, Lord. Oh, he's the healer, Jesus. The mighty power, Jesus. The almighty King, Jesus. He's touching everyone here forevermore. Forevermore. We hail you, Jesus. We welcome you, Jesus. We adore your name, Jesus. Oh, oh, forevermore. Forevermore. You are the king of Zion. The Jew, the sly Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you. Father, we just thank you. We worship you, God. Oh, come rain, Jesus. Come rain, Jesus. Come rain, Jesus. 
at work and we thank you for the anointing that is even flowing through our worship. Lord, we desire an encounter like none other. We desire an encounter in your word. Let your word impact us this morning. Let your word break us. Let your word mold us. Let your word give us a newer and a better version of who we were. Lord, we thank you for the power of the word that is able to make a man anew. Let your word come forth this morning with power. Let it come forth with healing. Let it come forth with salvation. Let your word come forth with deliverance. We thank you for the power of the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Come on, you could do better. You could give Jesus a better clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to welcome you this morning into the house of the Lord for those of you that are in the building. Those of you that are on your way here, I want to welcome you. Those of you that have made a decision to be part of this service virtually, whether on YouTube, Facebook, or on Zoom, we want to say God bless you for coming. We are indeed blessed to be gathered together here in the name of the Lord. Bible says where two or three are gathered, there he is in their presence. And so we know today we are in the company of the Lord, and the Lord is going to minister to us. If you believe it, say, I'm ready, Lord. Now talk to him like you really are ready. Amen. Well, it's, it's been just a week away, but I, I must tell you, I miss home. There is, there is no better place than being home. Amen. We, we had to go to Ghana for just about a week, and the reason we had to go was because one of our daughters was celebrating her 20th wedding anniversary, and they had what they call renewal of vows, so we had to be there because they wanted us to uh, officiate the ceremony. And I tell you what, it was such a beautiful, glorious time. Seeing marriage, you know, and, uh, you know, having to get this couple come back to the altar after 20 years to say the same thing they said 20 years ago, Except that now they had to add the word still. I love you still. I want to be with you still. I, I want to be in this union still. It was such an amazing thing. And I tell you, marriages were revived. Folks that were considering divorce had to change their mind. Folks that were wondering whether marriage was for them were now beginning to consider it. As folks stepped up and began to share testimonies about this couple. And I think it is time for us as the body of Christ to celebrate family, celebrate marriage, especially as we see in our days the fact that the kingdom of darkness is doing everything possible to tear apart what is supposed to hold community, society, which is marriage. We see marriage under attack, families under attack. We can't even tell the difference between a man and a woman anymore. There is no definition of the gender anymore. All kinds of things are being called all kinds of things. And today we have gender fluidity. Somebody is a man today, tomorrow is a woman. All kinds of craziness in our world today. And I think this is happening because the church has refused to be the church. Amen. We have compromised we, who we are, who we are supposed to be. 
But I want to believe that this is the time and season where God wants the church of Jesus Christ to rise up, to become audible and visible. We cannot longer go into hiding. Bible says you don't light a candle and put it under a table or a bushel. You got to put it on a mountaintop. You got to put it on a table so that you can beam the light in the dark places of the world. Because we can see so much darkness in our world today. Well, I must tell you that Ghana is on fire for the Lord. Hallelujah. Ghana is praying. Ghana has always been a praying nation. And I tell you, they are praying. And I believe that same revival must happen in this land. Even as I had the opportunity to preach in about three different churches, I could see the hunger for God. I could see the thirst for the things of God. I could see the desperation in the hearts of people to encounter change. And I pray we will have the same revival in our churches here in America and even beyond. God wants us to do that. That is what the church of Jesus Christ must be about. Hallelujah. And I bring you greetings from all these beautiful churches. I was in Reverend Azikiza's church. He has a bunch of young people that are hungry and desperate for revival. And he brings greetings as well. I was in Apostle Laiku's church. We had such an amazing time with thousands of people in attendance just hungry to see revival in the land. We were in Bishop Fafali's church. It was no different. Everybody's heart is desiring to see a change in the move of the things we are seeing in our world today. And so I believe that God is going to do the same thing. As he brings one of his great generals here this morning. I want you to open your heart. I want you to open your spirit. And receive the word of God that is coming forth from this great servant of God. Yesterday we had the opportunity to fellowship. And I could feel the passion of God in his heart. This man, I, I don't know how many of you know him. But back in the days, you know, we were teenagers. And he and his twin brother, we all know Reverend Steve Mensa. They would go around everywhere in the country just ministering the word of God in songs. And today, over so many years, I don't know how many years. I'm sure their church is almost 40 years, Reverend. <laughs> Amen. And, and God is using them all over the place. They planted churches around the world. And God is using them for amazing things. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning... We are truly honored to have this great servant of God. And I want you to rise up on your feet as we welcome God's servant, Reverend Stanley Mensa. Let us receive the man of God with love as he ministered the word of God powerfully. put our hands together again for the Lord for his grace and his mercy powerful shake about two three people tell them the hand of the Lord is upon you the hand of the Lord is upon you tell the person next to you the hand of the Lord is upon you the hand of the Lord is upon you clap your hands one more time in Jesus name I feel the anointing. I feel the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands to the presence of the Lord. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I want to do, and I give you praise. For you are my right. Just less I worship you oh my God there is none like you 
Father, this morning, we thank you that you've made it possible for us to be in your presence. We don't take it for granted. And after this service, we'll continue to give you the glory because your grace has abound unto us. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Powerful. Please be seated. I want to salute members of Love Legacy Chapel International. It's a joy whenever I'm being invited to come over. And um, I've seen some faces that I've been seeing all over this year. Thank you for your loyalty and your dedication for, for this ministry. Amen. Amen. Well, I thank God for your senior pastor, Apostle Charles, and the wife. Great people of God. Yesterday we were in their house. We ate jollof rice, we ate kinky, we ate chicken, we, oh my God. When I got home, I went straight to bed. They received us nicely. I pray that that invitation will come again. <laughs> Our table was full of meals. We ate all kinds of things from Nigeria to US to UK. All dishes were on the table. Thank you for inviting us. God bless you. Today, with the time that we are left with, I want to preach and, and see whether I can be a blessing unto you. I've titled my message this morning, It is time to recover because your hair will grow again. That is the topic for this morning's sermon. Turn to the person next to you. It is time to recover. Because your hair will grow again. I want to also salute all the other pastors and the leaders of this church. Thank God for the pastor's wife. I've heard the lead worship many, many times. Powerful worship leader. Those of you pastors who have stood with Love Legacy Chapel International. God bless you. Your labor in the law will never be in vain. In God's own time, he will make all things beautiful for you. And all desire shall be met. See, I receive it three times. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. All desire in this house shall be met. Say amen. Okay, so I want to read Judges chapter 16. This is one of the sermons that I'm sure, this is one of the uh, passages that I'm sure your pastor have um, read before, but you know, we can read a topic and uh, we can give it a different approach. Yeah. And we can all make some contribution to the same scripture that we have all read because the Holy Spirit ministers to us differently. And I'm coming at this very subject, an old topic again, and I want to add more to what we have heard over the years. So Judges 16, I want to read from verses 18 to 31. Now before I read the topic, I want to give you a little background of the book of Judges, which has to do with Samson. Amen? And um, there is this couple in the book of Judges who were very, who were very desperately in need of a child. They were barren. And they have trusted God for, for this need to be met. Sometimes you want to trust God for something. And there could be delay. Sometimes delays are not denied. It doesn't mean that God is denying you. It has to do with the matter of timing. Somebody say timing. So, they were trusting God for a child. Manoah, who is of the tribe of the Danites, the wife was barren, but an angel appeared unto him at a certain season and spoke and said to him that, now that you have waited for the Lord for so long, it's about time the Lord will bless you with a child. Which means that God never denies us of what we ask him. 
it depends on what you are asking and it also depends on why you need it. Sometimes the need is off. And God knows what we need. Yeah. Sometimes your need can take you out of the kingdom. If God were to answer all our prayers, I don't think some of us, some of us would be preachers. It's all because the things we ask God to do for us, you know, it was far away from becoming pastors. But then at a certain point, I realized that it was good he didn't answer those prayers. And he answered these ones. Because we have been in the kingdom and the fruit of our labor has not been in vain all over these years. So the Bible said the husband then requested of the Lord to bring back the angel to explain to them exactly what, uh, can you lower it or pull it up? Exactly what the purpose of this child that have been described. Because the angel described, the angel described the reason for the birth of this boy. He said you shall conceive and after the conception, you will give birth to this young, beautiful boy. And he will be separated unto me. You will not, you will not shave his hair. He will not drink strong drink. He will not do all these things because he will be set aside unto me as a Nazarite. And the reason why I'm bringing him because he will be the deliverer of the people of Israel from the hands of the Philistines that the Lord has banished them into slavery for over 40 years. So the birth of Samson was of an assignment. And I believe that God has given birth to you for an assignment. Nobody is just created to occupy space in this our world. There's a reason why you have been created. And I pray that God will open your eyes of understanding to know why you've been created. Yes, oh, are we preaching here? Yes, Say, Pastor, preach. So the angel came over and spoke exactly the things that the boy was going to do. He's going to be their deliverer. He's going to grow. You will not, you will not shave his hair. He will not drink strong drink. He will not be involved in other things. And he will grow in the grace. And his hair will be separated unto me because I will establish a covenant between me and his hair. It will be so long. You will not shave it. And his might. See this deliverer is not the one like Moses. Where he will need rod to divide the sea. No. This one is might. He needs the strength of this man. To bring deliverance to the people of Israel. And lo and behold. At the at the at the certain point in time, Samson was conceived. They even went further to tell um, the wife that you yourself must separate. You see, you can't just behave anyhow, eat anything, because you are carrying a special child on a special assignment. So you have to be careful how you behave amongst people. Separate yourself. Don't be drinking here and there. Don't be partying anywhere. Separate yourself. Concentrate and wait until this child is born. And lo and behold, Samson was born. And Samson was a beautiful child. And was growing in grace. And as it was prophesied, his hair grew. He had seven locks of hair upon his head. 
and the seven locks of hair upon his head were the seven spirits of God upon him so that he became a very special child. It was prophesied in the book of Revelation chapter 5 verse 6. Put on the screen. Revelation chapter 5 verse 6. It's like Jesus, the Lamb of God from Revelation, who is described as having seven horns that are the seven spirit of God. So let's read it. Revelation chapter 5 verse 6. Put it on the screen. Are you there? Revelation, the book of Revelation. Okay, so these, okay, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirit of God, sent forth, sent forth into all the earth. So, these seven spirits that were sent, on, one of them that it rested upon was on Samson. Was on Samson with his dreadlocks. And so, he had a supernatural might. He didn't have the strength of a normal human being. So, if you read, if you read the book of Judges, you will see the way he exhibited his strength. He can just take a jawbone of a lion and slay over a thousand soldiers. I mean, if 1,000 soldiers want to beat you, they will beat you. But because of, his, because of his supernatural strength, they couldn't even touch him. He beats them all. And he can carry the gate of a city and put it upon his shoulders and run up onto a hill. I mean, when you talk about the gate of a city, it's not a small gate. You can't even carry your own gate. What a shock. And it has an unusual power. Very strong and very charismatic. But one of the problems he had was that he loves women. Every weakness that you entertain will overpower you one day. If you have any weakness, you got to deal with it and fight it and overcome it. Because every weakness overpowers a man. Sometimes weakness in your life can override scriptures. You see what the Bible said, but your weakness overrides it. So when you are fighting some kind of weaknesses in your life, you have to fight it very well. Amen. Oh, are we here? Amen. So this is something that was born by God with his long hair, beautifully made, very charismatic and power and strength and has the ability to tie the tails of over 300 folks, set fires on them and set them ablaze in the farms and the cities of the Philistines. He does unusual things. He goes for, 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 for a woman in the, in, the, in the camp of the Philistines and the parents were like, why? You couldn't find any beautiful woman in the, in the in the camp of the Israelites, why do you go to the enemy's camp to take a woman? Then he said, I like her because she pleases me. When your weaknesses pleases you, you are in danger. <laughs> what a shock. And then, he, and then he goes for a prostitute. Goes to Timna and 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 associate himself with with other women, and these are some of the things that were fighting his destiny. But there's one thing about God: once He sets you on the path to fulfill an agenda, right. when He when He starts it, He will finish it. 
anything that God has started with you, he will finish it. The only reason is that you must come to yourself and turn back and go back to God for him to finish what he has started with you. Oh, am I preaching here? Say, Pastor, preach. The seven spirits of God, because he has, he's supposed to judge the people of Israel, he has, the seven could contain the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, the fear of God, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of the Lord himself was all upon him. It is the might that was operating within him. Very strong person. Then he went for another lady called Delilah. At that time, Delilah was a woman. But today, Delilah is not a person. Delilah is a spirit. Anything that aims at your destiny is a Delilah. Anything that comes after you and is aiming to bring you down is a Delilah. You will not see a Delilah in the physical form. But alcohol can be your Delilah. Yeah. You can drink your destiny out. When you, when you were a man and you start having feeling for another man, it's a Delilah. It has its agenda. People are saying that, well, let's not be talking about this. Agenda. What should we talk about? What should we talk about? Because if you don't talk about it, our people will be converted. Now that they are on the streets and things and aiming at our children, we have to talk about it. When you're a woman, you don't have feelings for a man, but, but then well, rather your feelings to another woman. It's a Delilah. It's, it has its aim and agenda. Am I here? Yeah? You can't, you can't just say that, well, I'm born that way. You're not born that way. It's a Delilah that have come into your space to make sure you miss timing and season and mess you up and destroy the purpose of your creation. Nobody is created just to occupy space. You think that, well, well, I don't know, I'm an accountant. Apart from you being an accountant, you have a divine assignment. Accountant is to put food on your table. And feed your family. Apart from that, you have a, a divine agenda. Yes. A divine agenda. Because we in this world, we are supposed to, to, to follow our divine agenda so that the world will be taken for Jesus. I don't know about the U.S., but in Africa, where I come from, if you don't stand strong, the enemy will knock you down. Yeah. If you don't stand strong, no matter how tall, how big, how handsome, and how beautiful you look, the enemy can sweep you under their feet. And you have nothing to, to show forth again. That we used to be very handsome and very beautiful and very, you know, charismatic has become nothing. And it's a target of the devil to aim at your destiny. And it is called Delilah. Delilah is not a person. Delilah is a spirit. So watch out what is around you. Watch out what you have become addicted to. Anytime you don't feel like coming to church, a Delilah is knocking at your door. Oh, am I preaching here? It doesn't come in a person. For you realize, first Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday, four Sundays, five Sundays, and every time you are called upon or you receive a text, oh, well, I don't know, I don't know. I don't feel like, I, every time you don't feel like, it's a Delilah. For you realize, the spirit of fellowship with the Lord has left you. And you too, you can't pray. You can't be on your own. And the Bible said, neglect not the assembling of yourselves together. That one too is a problem. Then know that you are about to lose your destiny. That marriage is about to break. That boy that you have raised up is about to go wayward. Say, Pastor, preach. So, 
when Delilah came into the life of Samson, then they realized that Samson has fallen in love with this lady. Already they have been looking for an opportunity to, to, to bring down his might. The man was too strong for them. Can you carry the city of a gate and climb and hill with it? What sort of might is that? Is the might from above. It means the light of God was upon him. The hand of the Lord has carried, is enveloping around him. But he has a weakness. And the Bible said they came to the chamber of Delilah and spoke to her. The man is in love with you. Can you entice him and find out the secret of his strength? This man is too much for us. We can't handle him. We can't tame him. We can't defeat him. Even as one man army. And we the galaxy of armies around. We can't stand him. With the jawbone of an eye. He didn't carry a bow or arrow or a machine gun. He beats all of us. There is something about him that is unusual. There is a drive with him. So can you find out exactly what he's standing on? Or am I here? Sometimes association from friends, it doesn't become, it's not like because you look beautiful. It's because Satan has sent him for an assignment in your life. That is why you have to weigh every relationship. You have to weigh relationships. And let me say this, don't get angry. The relationship can come from church. Familiar spirits. Familiarizing himself around you. But sent by the devil to bring you down. It's called a Delilah. Ask the person next to you, you look like a Delilah or you are real? <laughs> I know worshippers and praise and worship leaders who have become like nothing. Because of relationship in the church. In the church. Not an outside. Not outside the church. In the church. In the church. They look very, very friendly and very familiar. <laughs> Associating themselves with, with you. And, and, and he is taking inspiration from the devil to pull your ministry down. Gifted person in the ministry. Place the drums, place the organ, and then for now, it doesn't function. Doesn't come to church. Why? Because a lady has knocked on his door. And since that girl came into the boy's life, he doesn't play the organ anymore. When you call him, he doesn't pick. You prefer to spend the Sunday with her than come to church. A Delilah has entered your house. Oh, am I preaching here? Or you are angry. I'm coming from a far distance. I'm not joking here at all. I've come to give it to you. <laughs> Listen to the word of God. It's a very powerful man. Someone sent by God. But had weakness. And so that is where my scripture starts from. Judges 16. Reading from verse 18. And I want you to pay attention to the scriptures. And when Delilah saw that he had not, he had told her all his heart, she sent and called to the laws of the Philistines, saying, come up this once, for he had shown me all his heart. Then the laws of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money. And brought money. And she, and she made him sleep upon her knees. She made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. 
And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And you wish not that the Lord was departed from him. Take note of this particular scripture. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house. How bit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Go ahead. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them, gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God. And he rejoiced, for they said, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God has delivered unto our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. What a shock. Go ahead. And it came to pass when, when their hearts were married that they said, Call for Samson that he may make us spot. And they called for Samson out of the prison house and he made them spot. It means he, did, he entertained them. And they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may fill the pillars well upon the house standard that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women and all the lords of the Philistines were there and there were, and there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld, that beheld why Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, Oh Lord, someone said, Oh Lord. Remember me. Pray this and strengthen me. I pray thee. Only this once. Oh God, that I may avenge, I may once avenge the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was born up. The one with his right and, and the one the other on his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. And his brethren, his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Ethel in the burying place of Manoah, his father, and he judged Israel 20 years. So when you finish reading like this, it means that in spite of what, what he went through, he still fulfilled his assignments. That is why your hair will grow again. That is why no matter what situation that you have found yourself into, you have been... Your husband has packed his things and left off behind for another woman. Your hair will grow again. You have miscarried children. You have lost money. You have lost businesses. You have been put off from your work. You are, not, you are no more functioning like the way your hair will grow again. And therefore, I have come this afternoon to tell you that recover. Don't be... Don't be where you have been all this year. It is time for you to recover. You cannot be in God and still be going down. You can never be a Christian, be in God and still be going down. It is time to recover. Because your hair will grow again. There are many chances in God. Let me tell you something. God will never leave you nor forsake you. You have to recover. That the Lord will speed up your process. God is not like a man that gives up on people. God doesn't give up on people. No matter how low you have become. 
Your job is to recover. Recover by coming to church. Recover by joining your ministry. Recover by to do what you were doing at first. Because your hair is growing again. I've come this afternoon to tell you, my sister, recover. If you have been left behind with the children, blow your nose, cry a little, but recover. You've lost businesses, you've lost money, you're no more functioning. Recover quickly. God has been waiting for you to recover. In fact, you have been talking to the wrong people. Your friends are not real. You have friends who are jealous of your former glory. They celebrate your downfall, but they are hugging you at the same time. They carry what we call Judas' spirit. The most dangerous Christian is the person that embraces you and stabs you at the same time. So a dangerous Christian. Can you imagine that Judas has gone to sell the Messiah for 30 pieces of silver and he's still with, eating with him? Jesus, are you okay? Jesus, are you all right? Is everything okay with you? You did anything? Meanwhile, he has sold the Messiah. Anybody who gossips about another fellow friend in the ministry and still smile with the person is carrying Judas' genes. Smile with me, talk with me, embraces me. Meanwhile, you are the one breaking my legs. You carry the genes of Judas. You come around, hello, sister, hello, sweetheart, hello. Meanwhile, you are the one breaking my legs in this church. All the stories around is that you are the one behind it. Man, when you see me, you pretend as if you were okay. You are not okay. You are not okay. You are the one gossiping about me. You are Judas's cousin sister. <laughs> cousin sister. Yeah. You are not real. Today, Christians are not real. Yes, sir. There are pretenders in the house of God. They pretend, they act, they pretend. I say, oh, hello, hello, hello. It's not hello. Look, stay away from me. And be real. Then I'll receive you. I don't like people who are deceived, who are deceptors, and who are not real. You're not real with me. If I've shared my little issue with you, why broadcast it? I finish sharing with you so that you pray with me. Then you will pick a phone and tell people about it. How does all these people, how did they get to know it was through you? Meanwhile, you are my best friend, and we share communion and we worship together in the church. Ooh, am I preaching here? That's why people leave church. They get offended. They get to know issues before they realize that the whole thing is all over the church. When did he go to the radio station to broadcast his problem? It was through you. Meanwhile, I trusted you. And Samson loved Delilah. Samson loved Delilah. And the Philistines came to her. We know that you love him. But can you do us a little favor? And what favor is that? 11 pence. This one is true. It's a scripture. 11 pieces of silver. I'll give you, another brother, I'll give you. Just find out the secret of his strength. We want to enter into that area. So if it's true love, would you reject it? How much money will you give to uh, Apostle Shadda's wife and you, she will betray the husband. She will never be the husband after many years of marriage. I'll be surprised. True love. Any husband who will betray you, say, true love. It's an opportunist. Opportunist and some way spirit. And guess what? The Bible said, and she did that consistently for many days. Enticing something. Show me the secret of your strength. I want to know where your strength comes from. Something like, why do you want to know? No, I just want to know because it pleases me. I like your broad shoulders and your macho strength. I love it. I love you. Tell me what is the secret. Just, oh, no, no, no. Yes, you just find some new ropes and, 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 and buy my hands and things and then my strength will be gone. And she will do it. Yes, and she will do it. Then she said, Samson, Samson, the Philistines are after you. Then the Bible said, and he will rise up from sleep and tore the ropes into pieces and beat the people. Then the 
Delilah said, mm, you lied to me. You lied to me. You don't love me. You say you love me. You don't love me. You don't tell me the truth. You don't love me. You're lying to me. Then she'll go on another agenda again. Then they'll tell her another and say, something, something. The Philistines are here. Then she'll rise up. The Bible says she did that unto death. So, 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 I'm, I'm like, he's, he, she's harassing him, looking for the opportunity to just give. What kind of love is that? What kind of woman is that? It means that Delilah was on an assignment for his destiny. It's a special child. So when you are in the house of God, be, be, beware of Delilah's. A Delilah can be your own sister. From the same mother, same father. Will you be really surprised when your own brother goes to the home office and go, and go and give you out? It's possible. People don't look the way they look. People are devilish, but they look like angels. And let me say this, dressing doesn't really reveal people. Can me dress well? But she carries different spirits. The Bible, the Bible said, by their fruits, you shall know them. Don't look at dressing, look at the fruits. Don't look at makeup, look at dressing. Don't look at the suit, look at the, dress, the spirit. She carries a spirit. Carries a spirit. People have not done well because of others. Mm. Had it been for the Lord, she could have gone far. Yes. Oh, last time when I was praying, the Lord put you into my spirit. And the Lord told me that you are the one that I should marry. She's a liar. Wow. He's a liar. Yes. And then you do. Well, is that so? Me to the Holy Ghost also spoke to me like that. Which Holy Ghost spoke to you? Instead of you buying into the spirit, go on waiting and fasting and prayer to see whether it is real. At once you give in. That's why the marriage didn't last. That's why the relationship didn't last. We didn't pray into it because people are not real. And we have betrayers in this country and amongst us. Oh, am I preaching here? And she did that for many days. And then one time, she said, well, if you don't tell me, I'm leaving home. <laughs> I'm leaving this relationship because I'm tired of asking the same thing, acting the same thing. Every day, you'll be lying to me. And the Bible said, and the Philistines wait at the chamber to attack this man. And it's okay, 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 okay. I'm a Nazarite. You have not shaved my head before. I don't drink spirits. I don't drink wine. I don't drink alcohol. I don't eat certain foods. Once my hair is shaved, my strength is gone. Are you sure? Are you sure about this one? Because I can't take it anymore. Tyson him. Why will he entice a servant of God like that? Why will he entice another fellow brother like that? What kind of spirit do you have? Enticing the person to evil deeds. When you pick up your friend and say, let's go, let's go and get drunk. Well, I don't wonder what kind of spirit you are carrying. You just want people to be like you. If you want to get drunk, go and get drunk. Leave me alone. And since you joined this church, it looks like your life has become quiet. What should you become? <laughs> We've been all around. We have received nothing. Now we have given our life to Christ. We have meaning and fulfillment in the Lord. Yes, I don't, all things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. I have a new life in Christ. I have a new joy. And I said, well, 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 Joyce, Lindy, these days, every time I call you, I'm in church. Every time I call you, I'm in church. What is all this church, 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 church? He said, Delilah. Yeah. Am I preaching here? Yeah. And then the Bible said, and Samson put 
his head on her knees. And what amazes me is the fact that, Pastor, these dreadlocks have been on him for many years. No razor has ever touched his head before, ever since he was born. And the hair have intertwined by itself and become like dreadlocks. And there are seven of them. It means it's not easy for you to just take a, 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 either a, a razor or scissors or a cutlass, whatever it is, to shave it. But Samson's head was upon her lap and they were shaving his head and he didn't wake up. What kind of lap is that? And what did they use that you couldn't wake up from sleep? I can't get somebody to just talk to me. I, 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 I don't understand. That you have this hair on since you were born. No razor have touched your hair. Now, Philistines are shaving and you are still asleep. How do you fall asleep? This anesthesia has a spirit in it. <laughs> Can they shave your hair? The hair that is so thick, strong, has intertwined, so heavy. This whole heavy hair, ever since you were born, they have not touched you before. It has become dreadlocks. And they are shaving it off and your head is still on the lap of a woman. Wow. And you can't wake up. You see, sleep, if you are asleep, look, some of you, some of you, you put your phone by your side. Even the sound of your phone vibrating, you can wake up. That this hair is being shaved. What did they use? A little, a, a little shave? Or, 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 or a dagger or what what machine did they use and how can you something still be asleep the bible said and when the letter said something something the, 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 the Philistines are here to fight you the bible said he woke up and he wished not that the spirit of the lord has left him It didn't leave him when he woke up. It left him when he gave out his secrets. So by the time they were shaving his hair, all his sensitivity has been desensitized. God has left him. God can depart from you. So you learn your lesson. But he will never leave you, nor forsake you. There are some times... When you go, the word of God, Bible class, preaches, will be signaling you, warning you, are coming. But God can't fight your will. At a point, he cannot reach you anymore. Where you are, he cannot fight your will. Okay, if you want to go, go. But he has not left you nor forsaken you. But he can leave you. So you learn your lesson. If, you, if you've seen, if you're a believer speaking in tongues and then you see uh, somebody in the world who drinks and things and is in love with you, you say, well, well, pastor, I don't know, but I've been waiting for the Lord for all this while then. And now that this man has come, well, 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 me, I, I, I want to get married though, because I'm heading 40. I cannot wait any longer. But the Bible said, be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. What righteousness has to do with unrighteousness? What has Christ got to do with Belial? Come out from among them. Be separate. You ignore the scripture. It will prompt you. But at a certain point, God will leave you. And when God leaves you, all your sensitivity about the Holy Spirit has gone. You can even listen to a worship song. You pass by, you see uh, 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 alcohol, you drink, you get drunk. This man uh, uh, and, and everything about you, you are, will be in the choir worship team. You have stopped. You stop playing the drums. You stop, you stop coming to church. Every
faith thing will die around you. When you realize that you can't have the edge to come to church, then something is leaving you or has left you. When you are home, you don't feel the presence of the Lord anymore. You don't have the edge to pray. You find it difficult to drag yourself to church. Something is leaving you. The Bible says, neglect not the assembling of yourselves. Oh, am I here? Something, something, something. The Philistines are around you. The Philistines have come over. Then he rose up, flexed his muscle. And when he wants to just attack, he was an ordinary man. Because that which gave him strength has left him. Has been taken away through, through wrong association. Wrong friendship. You have become unequally yoked with another guy since you met this lady at the office. Your sensitivity towards prayer has changed. You have been desensitized about spiritual things. When we, when we come to church and we are worshiping, you are sleeping. How can you be sleeping when the presence of the Lord is in the room? We are praising, we are worshiping, and you are normal. Sometimes you are here, but your spirit is not here. When we are worshiping, we are preaching, you are on full. Your spirit is outside, but your body is here. Your body is here because if I don't come, pastor will talk. Let me just go and then mark my register and then continue my journey. Really? At a certain point, God cannot fight with you anymore. Because right from the beginning, Samson had been going to take a hard lot, go, to, go, go, go for women, go to the Philistines camp, and this. And that means why you are carrying the seven spirit of God. They are resting upon you. God has used you to do mighty things. Now, a woman, there are good women, but there are some way women. You didn't used to drink. Since this lady entered your life, you started drinking. You go home, you're a family man. You love your family. Ever since you found this girl, now you come home at dawn. When they call you, you don't pick. Where have you been? You, you concoct lies. It means a Delilah has taken you far. Oh, am I preaching here? Far away. Now when we see you, we call your phone. Hello, Joyce. Praise the Lord. Uh, what did you say? I said, praise the Lord. Uh, uh, I don't know. When are you coming to church? Church. I don't know. Well, I'll come. Tell pastor that I'm in touch. I'm in touch. At a point, the spirit of the Lord go will leave you. Stretch forth your hand. He will warn you, signal you, don't go far. So that's what happened to Samson. We men up and down, sleep over, spend the night in Gaza with a harlot. God was with him at the point. God said, now, the relationship between us and you and the secret of your strength, you have given it out. You're on your own. You're on your own. So that is was why when they were shaving him, he didn't realize it. It's gone. Sometimes you, sometimes you can enter into a certain area of your life and you realize that, is it me? I didn't used to do all these things. It was God has left you for a while. So you will learn. But when you come back home, the spirit will just be waiting for you. I will not strive with man forever. It's even as I'm speaking right now. 
there are people who have entered. You can say that this one is a son of Delilah. This man that is harassing me is a Delilah saint. Anytime I talk about church, he doesn't want to know. Anybody that you are working with, and when you talk about Christ, you talk about church, he doesn't want to know. It's a red flag. Oh, am I preaching here? A Christian, you can't ignore the things of the spirit. Now you can't even play worship songs on your phone. When you are sitting in your car, what music do you, you what music do you listen to? Then you are shaking your head. And Delilah has taken over. Now you have you know all the worship songs. I worship you. All the nice songs you don't play. When the protocol person came to, to pick me up from where I was staying, the moment I entered the vehicle. Worship. Worship. Why should I have I'm coming to preach? I need to hear worship. If I enter the car, it was like, I said, guy, are you a Christian or what? I will question him. And the whilst we are driving, he's talking about Christianity. We are discussing Christian values. These are people in the Lord. When you, when you meet your friends, what do you talk about? You talk about the next date. And when there's a funeral in this city, some a, a friend's cousin, sister's nephew, hey. and the thing is happening at Texas. You will go find find ticket, uh, show your cloth, and go and jamboree where you're black dancing. When you come to church, you are quiet. You don't even know one song. Are you annoyed with me? No, sir. I'm preaching the word of God to you. Yes, sir. Preaching the word of God to you. And if God, who planted something in the womb of this woman, can depart from him, who, 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 who are you? Yes. So you don't joke with the things of God. You don't take God's things for granted. You don't play games with the devil. You don't joke with the things of God. You don't take church for granted. No, you don't, you don't joke with the things of God. You, you commit yourself to the things of God. Because this one is leading you to, 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 to eternal life. There's a way that seems right unto a man. But the end of that way, it will lead you to death. Nothing inspires you about that God. If you come into church, you have to drag yourself. People have to text you. People have to call you. Send you a reminder. Oh, these people are worrying me. Oh, what's all this church? Okay, I'll come, I'll come. Really? We will not be sending you. We, we, we are not going to be sending you texts every day. At a point, we'll leave you. You're on your own. You're on your own. You're on your own. How many times can we be sending you? It's Sunday service. Service at 11 and it's 10 o'clock. You know, you're supposed to say, oh, well, they're still calling me. This pastor is still worrying me. Who should you worry? It's our job to worry you about church. Because there's, because there's a way also that leads it onto righteousness, but only a few have found it. You are one of the few who have found it. Am I preaching here? Look, when you have a friend who calls and says, Joy Slim, let's go to church. You should thank God. Because he wants your salvation. When you have a wife who will send a reminder to you as a husband, Honey, I don't know going to church. Oh, I'm tired. So, no, let's try and go to church. Let the children also follow. You must appreciate it. Yes. You must appreciate it. Am I preaching here? Yes. Then the Bible said, when they realized that his strength was gone because his hair has been shaved, then they plug off his eyes. That vision that you have, that foresight that you have has been taken away. Now dream your dreams. Dream your dreams. Then they carried him and sent him to the prisons to grind corn for his enemies. There are 
are people, they will show you their teeth, but they will buy it you afterwards. So when his eyes were broken, where was Delilah? Hello, Samson. I love you so. Where was she? It's long gone. Long gone. And then she started grinding corn. Grinding wheat. Grinding all kinds of cereals. And she was grinding it, going around. But they forgot the process of his recovery. That one, God hid it from them. That's, that's how God is. At the point that he was grinding the corn, he said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm coming back to you. But you will suffer the consequences of your action. God can bring you back, but you will pay, you will suffer the consequences of you being a boy and being together with another boy. You will suffer the quest. You wear pampas. You 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 you, you will leak. That one God will not stop. God will not stop it. You will suffer. You 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 will go through hardship, but God is with you. He was grinding corn. He was grinding. His eyes have been put off. His hair has been shaped. But every day, a spark of the hair shoots out. And that one, God hid it from them. Yes, yes, yes. I shave every day. Yesterday I shaved, today I've shaved. It, the hair grows every day. Every day. If I, leave, if I leave my beard for the next one month, it will grow. I'll be like Moses. Beard. It grows every day. If it doesn't have boy, still hair grows. So every day that he was walking, grinding the corn, the corn bill with a large stone on it, his hair was growing and his strength was returning back every day. But the Philistines forgot. It means recover. It means recover. You have been abandoned. Recover. You've lost your job. Recover. You have miscarried your children. Recover. Six years of marriage, no child. Recover. You don't have a job. Recover. A sign of recovery is coming together to fellowship with the brethren, not be on your own. There is something around us when we come together. The worship, the fellowship, the encouragement of the word will cause you to grow. So rise up from that house and come to church. Don't be tired. This is where the recovery starts. Amen. Neglecting all the assembly. Call friends. See, when, when, when you, 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 you don't close church and go and visit a depressed sister. It's, it's not appropriate. Go for him. Go pick her. Tell my sister, this man has left you. But let's go to church. Let's go to church. I've come to pick you up. Spend time. Give him some breakfast. Come on, jump into my car. Let's go to church. It's a process of recovery. You can never come to church and go back the same. Even as I'm preaching right now, no, not everybody will go back the same. You will all, you all catch a word or two. You catch a word or two. That's why we come to church. We, 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 we don't come to church to, to, to mark register. We come to church because we want to grow. We want to grow and recover and become good Christians. That's why we come to church because no one person knows it all. This one will come and preach. I don't want to come and preach. I don't want to come and preach. Then we are recovering. Then we are carrying, then we are growing. Right. What, what will it profit a man if you have three houses, big mansions, good lawn, they are mowing your lawn, and you go to hell? Ah. Mm, I have three acres of land. They are mowing. You finish, you go to hell. Go to the go to funerals and see how many. How many dollars and houses and blocks that are buried with a person? You are buried alone with your clothing. You haven't finished paying your house. They, re they take it away. 
give it out. Your clothes, you just give it to some shop. Give it to people. You've lost everything. But when you have Christ, you have eternal life. Are we here? Yes. The Bible said, at a point, he said, well, today is entertainment day. We want to laugh a little. Please go fetch Samson so he will make a sport. Let him come entertain us because by the time he's coming, he's blind. He doesn't have vision. He's, he's lost weight. He's, he's become nothing. The one who used to destroy us. Go and bring him. But he has forgot. He has forgotten that he has recovered. Yes. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, sir. Have it at the back of your mind. No matter how far you go. That's why I said, it is time to recover. Yes. Your hair will grow again. Yes. Well, pastor, you don't know the things I've done. It doesn't matter what you have done. You are human. You can go deep down in the pit. God can still pick you up. Yes. Those of you watching me online, where is the online people? Recover! Yes. Come to church! Go and pour all those alcohol in your bathroom tub or sink or something and shut it down and recover. Look, don't get me angry. Don't get angry. If you have packed your things into a man's house when he has not married you, go collect your things. You have not been married. There's no engagement. There's nothing but your things. Your braziers and your underwear is all hanging into a man's house. Go collect it. It's about three years now. Nothing, there's no show. Go pick a cab. Take your car. Say, Johnny, Johnny, you know what? I have heard some preachings today. I want to do the right thing. I, I can't do this anymore. I, 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 I can't do this. So, Honey, what's wrong with you? So, I'm recovering. I'm recovering my underwear and my slippers and my, 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 I'm recovering. Please hand them over to me. Go collect your things. Can you go and live with a man who has not married you? have been there for the past three years and he doesn't even care anymore. And guess what? He's also going to other places. So, oh, pastor, today we are talking about you. That's why I came. I came from Ghana. I flew sev several thousands of miles away. Do you know I'm coming to say sweet words here? I've come to give it to you when I finish. I jump into the pickup. I'm gone. <laughs> but at least I've left a message with you. Recover. It is time to recover. Recover your image. Recover your reputation. Recover your financial standing. Recover your relationship back with God. And if the guy doesn't love Jesus, walk away. He's not married to you. He's not married. There's no wedding. There's no exchange of it. There's no engagement. Walk away. No commitment. It's not, but you are just trying to see whether it will work. It's not working. <laughs> go and pick your brazier here. Go into the washing machine. Pick up your underwear. Go for your sandals. And if you have suspens and frying pans in the house, collect them all. Recover all of them and go back home and start all over again because your hair will grow again. Because he will never leave you nor forsake you. So, Pastor, what will I do? You will start again. God will connect you one way or the other. God will, God, will, God will connect you to a job. God will connect you to a friend who will introduce you to something. Yes. God will connect. God will never leave you nor forsake you. When, 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 when they came up, they, they have forgotten that the secret of his strength was the hair. But the hair has grown and overgrown. It has overgrown. The hair is grown. 
Then Samson said, Lord, let me feel some pillars around me. And when he finished, leave this place. Come and strength is back. God has smiled on me again. God has smiled on me again. When a man leaves you, by the next time that he sees you, he will see a different personality. When a woman leaves you, the time, the next time that he sees you, you have advanced. When your enemy sees you after two years, you must advance. Move to a new area. Rent a new place. Buy yourself a new car. Change your clothes. Walk well. Because God has caused your hair to grow again. And guess what? Cut some associations. Cut them off. Cut them off. And be a Christian. By this time, you know that you know who are your friends and who are not your friends. The Bible said, and he prayed the prayer. That's in verse, verse 28, 29. So, Lord, give me back this strength for once. And the Bible said, and the pillars that he held on, he, he pulled them down. Do 3,000 3, human beings have gathered. All the warlords, and they have come to sacrifice to the dead. God is the God of their battle. Yes, yes. They have come to sacrifice to their God. So all the all the all those who matter in Philistines have gathered. And then when he pulled down the pillars, those who died that day were more than all the people he has killed in his entire life. So with this kind of killing, Israel must go free. It means I have fulfilled my destiny. You will finish your destiny. You will finish your destiny. The reason why you were born, you will finish it. I love you all. God bless all of you. You will recover. Turn to the person next to you. You will recover. God is with you. Your hair will grow again. Turn to the person behind you. Your hair will grow again. I see you coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord one more time. Shout recover. And, tell, and then put your hand on your chest. Say, I'm recovering. I'm recovering from everything that the enemy has stolen away from me. Because my hair is growing again. In Jesus' name, rise up on your feet. Let's close the service. Lift your hands, begin to pray. Lord, back up. The Lord spoke to me. When I, was, when I woke up this dawn, the Lord said something to me. He said, when you come and you finish preaching, let them collect an envelope and write what they must recover from and place a seed in it and bring it to my altar. What they put at the altar, that is what I will do. Because everybody must recover from something different. We are not all the same. I'm recovering from relationship. I'm recovering from my financial uh, slowing, uh, my financial uh, battles. I'm recovering from my family battles. Something. You write it behind the envelope. And then come to the altar. You kneel at the altar and play. come with your wife, your husband, your brother, your sister. Say, we are recovering from fellowship. We have lost touch with our families. Something has just left the house. We are recovering from it. Write it at the, end, at the back of the envelope. And whilst you are worshipping, come to the altar. If the altar is full, climb the altar and place it on the altar. Say, Lord, show me mercy and restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Amen. Lift up your hands. Find the envelope and collect it. Play F key. Maro robo soto lo boko se brene beka da baron deka. Mana na mama ka do boko do boko do boko do ba. Mana find the pen. Ushers distribute pens all around. If if you finish with your pen, give it to another person. 
Right behind it, what you must recover from and find some hundred dollars, find some two hundred dollars. If you have to swipe or look for a Momo account, just put it in. And when you finish, as you are worshiping, come to the altar. And whatsoever you put at the altar this afternoon, that is what we shall recover from. As a couple, as, as sisters and brothers, we are recovering from our, we have lost touch with our parents. We are recovering from it. Lift your hands so they will give you the envelope. All those who have who need the envelope, lift your hands. Come on. Lift your hands and Continue to pray in the name of Jesus. When you finish right, you begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I surrender all to you. Everything I bring to you with all the nothing with all the nothing I surrender all to you everything I give to you with all the nothing with all the nothing I give myself Help away oh God I give myself away so you can use me listen to me if your envelope is ready your money is ready find some two hundred dollars from find some five hundred dollars from find some hundred dollars or fifty dollars and come to the altar kneel at the altar and place Keep what you so must recover from at the foot of the altar so this is not your tie you this is not your offering this is a recovery seed me. a recovery seed give myself away when you bring the money kneel down and talk to God like something give my what you must recover from away. just leave it so like you come and place can you your sacrifice at the altar say something I give myself away. away everybody find an envelope hey, I give, give myself, myself away, away. so, so you can you me? I give myself away. If you are ready, if your envelope is ready, come hey, to the altar. I give myself away. So you can use me. I surrender all right, you must recover to from. you. Find a seat of recovery. Everything I give to you with all the nothing, with all the nothing, I surrender, I surrender all to you. Find an envelope, collect it from the ashes, Everything find some seed. I give right what you must recover from to you. Bring it to the altar. With all the Come with your brother. Come with your son. Come with your with sister. Come with your wife. Or come alone. With all the nothing. With all the nothing. I surrender. I surrender all to you. Everything I give come to, the to altar. you, 
find an envelope, find some fifty dollars, write nothing. something, my, the joy of the Lord. We hold the nothing. Joy of the Lord. I can't feel God's we presence hold in me. I want to recover from it. We hold the nothing. I have lost prayer life. My prayer life is we not as short. We hold the nothing. We hold the nothing. I surrender. I surrender the all to you. Everything I give to you withholding nothing withholding nothing I give myself away oh God I give myself away so you can use me. Bring your envelope, stand at the Give altar. Make a declaration that, Lord, this is my seed. I want to recover my fellowship with you. Yes, I want Lord. to recover my prayer life. Yes, I want to recover from my commitment. Yes, I, I want to recover from my commitment to coming to church. I want to recover from my joy. I have lost the joy of the Lord. Come, and come to the altar. Because the recovery process begins this afternoon. Yes, Lord. It starts today. Oh. You, will come, you shall recover all. Your hair will grow again. Oh. If you have oh. lost your job, you have lost your wife, you have lost your husband, yeah. you have miscarried your children, you have lost money, you have lost businesses, write it down and say, Lord, let me recover from these things. Oh. I used to have a small business, but I've lost it all. Your hair will grow again. Your hair will grow again. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. You you do miracles so great. There is no one else like, like you. you. Those of you online, there is. There are other ways of giving. Send, send it by other ways of giving by zeal or something, and, you do and type your request. So that Lord, great. I want to recover my Christianity. There is no. I want to recover from like this relationship. You. I thought it would end up in the in the there marriage. But I have just been disappointed. But I want to recover because I know my hair will grow again. For you, you are, are great. great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one else like I'm kneeling at you. this altar. And I'm using a few envelopes to represent mm -hmm. the rest of them. And I want to pray this prayer that Lord, show mercy. Mm -hmm. Show mercy on our recovery processes. Your word declares unto us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Even as we have approached the altar, we ask, O oh God, that our hair will grow again. It is time to recover from shameful attitudes, 
from all kinds of wrong decisions that we have made, from all kinds of wrong relationship we have been, we've missed it all. We are coming back to the house of God. Those of you online praying for you, come back to the house of God. Come back to the choir. Come back to the worship ministry. Come back to what you do in the house of God. Because your hair is growing again. The Lord is waiting to receive you in your recovery processes. And you will do better than when you started. For something killed more people in, at his death than all the people that he killed when he was alive. It means you will bounce back and become more better and stronger than when you gave your life to Christ. Father, I use this envelope as a point of contact for our recovery processes. In Jesus' name. Amen. You the miracle so great There is no one else like you Let's receive your pastor There is no one else like you you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you hallelujah hallelujah come on let's put our hands together and celebrate jesus Amen. Amen. What a word. What a word. We could take our seat for a minute. What a word. You know, the word we know is a double-edged sword. Sometimes it, it comes in a way that it suits. It creates joy. It, it creates all kinds of rendezvous, if you will. But then there are days the word will come and you could feel the word is piercing you, cutting you and it's pruning you it's a painful experience when you're going through pruning but we know the only way to bear more fruits and good fruits is to go through pruning and there is no pruning without cutting and so today if you feel you've been cut by the word say praise God Amen. be like Job who said even though he pierces me yet more would I trust him because you know he has good plans in the midst of it all. We want to say a big thank you to the man of God. We want to praise God for his life. What do we say to Reverend Stanley Mensah? God bless you, man of God. You've truly allowed the Lord to use you to minister to us, and we have been well fed. Thank you so very much, man of God. Amen. I've always said that coming to church and your attendance, if it doesn't translate to maturity, is a waste of time. So if all the things the man of God came all the way, traveling thousands of miles from Ghana to speak to us, if we left here and the only thing we could say is that I wish somebody was in church to listen. If that is the only thing we can say, that I wish he was in church today. If that is the only thing you're living here with, you've missed it. Because God doesn't judge his relationship with you based on church attendance. He judges that relationship with you based on your maturing process. It's church attendance translated into maturity. It means something in your life got to change because you came to church today. Something got to develop because you came to church. And you know, one outstanding thing the man of God said, which a lot of us don't realize, is that God is a covenant-keeping God. He promises never to leave us, never to forsake us. He says, you're going through the water, the fire. Whatever you're going through, he promises to go with you. But one thing we fail to realize is that if you decide to go hang out with pigs, like the prodigal son, he ain't going to come with you to the pig pen. But he's definitely going to wait for you. And in fact, he's not just going to wait for you. He's going to wait for your return to throw you a party. So you could go all you want to go. It's like you say, you know what, today I want to hang out at a nightclub. God is going to go to you till the entrance of the nightclub. But he's not going to enter. He's going to wait for you out there. Just like folks will come to church and they are so full of demonic presence. The demons wait outside. They come to church. When they are done, they go outside. The demons get right back in and continue their fellowship. 
God says, my glory I will share with no man. And so if you go to places where God is not being glorified, know for sure God is not going to go into those places with you. And I think as a believer, you must see that to be a scary thing for you to be in an environment when God, who is your protection, is not around you. You expose yourself. You open yourself for all kinds of attacks. I'm talking about why we come into all kinds of situations and places and we question what happened to the covenant God had with us. He says he will never leave us. No, you left. He never left. He never left. You left. God never leaves. It is we who walk away from him. And if you had a man of God today, God never left Samson. Samson decided to leave to put his head on the lap of a woman. God will not share that glory with another woman. So we make those choices to walk away from him. God never walks away from us. He's always waiting. When you decide to come home, he's going to be home. Your friends, your family will even wonder, how come he throws such a party with you? Because of his covenant with you. So I hope this morning, this word is going to challenge you to get right back on track with purpose, destiny, whatever God has called you to. You want to get right back at that place because God is waiting for you. I've heard so many people say, I'm waiting on the Lord. When in fact, it is God waiting on us. So I hope we get back home. Tell somebody, it's time to go home. Now tell somebody, it's time to go home. Bible says, when the prodigal son realized that it is time to go home, he did not waste time. He says, if it, if, 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 if it means that I'm going to go home to be just one of the servants of daddy, it is better to be a servant in the house of daddy than to be a prince in the kingdom of darkness. I'm going to go right back home. And that's exactly what he did. There is no better place than to be at home. I hope we do that. We make that decision today. Glory to God. Let's give God praise again for his word. Amen. Well, we're going to go right into a time of breakthrough. You know breakthrough means you are sowing seed and that seed becomes a door opener. So you want to take your offering, you want to take your tithe and let us bring before God our seed. We understand that when we sow seed, we also receive what? A harvest. And so take a seat today. If you are joining on Zoom, uh, virtually, you could join us on your screen. There are three ways you could give. You could give using Zelle, Cash App, and PayPal. And your tag is LegacySoul at gmail.com. You need an envelope, please lift your hands. An usher will place one in your hands. Uh, we take dollars. We take um, food stamps. We take student loan money. We take um, credit card. We take debit card. We take Metro card. I'm, I'm sure folks are like, what is he talking about? I'm just trying to say you could give God anything you have. Even if it's just a dollar, just go ahead and give it to him. It's okay. Because you understand that when I sow, it will come right back to me. Amen. Let's receive Pastor Helen as she prays over our seat today. Please lift your seat wherever you are today and let us honor God with our giving. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Reverend, for that word. Powerful. Praise our God. Life-changing. If you are ready, please hold your tithes offering high before the Lord. Bless God. Father God, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we bless and we honor you. As we come, Lord God, and present these gifts of love to you, Lord God, we want to say thank you, for you have been faithful to us, Lord God. And so, Lord, we ask that you will bless this seed, that as this seed, oh God, goes into the ground, the good soil of your kingdom, Father, that it shall produce a bumper crop harvest. I pray, oh God, that you will bless every giver this morning. I pray for those, oh God, who may not even have to give, but that because of your faithfulness, Lord God, you shall bless their house and their households. We thank you, Father, for the good soil of this ministry. We thank you, dear God, for the man of God. We pray blessings upon his life, Lord God. May everything that he sowed today come back to him as a great righteous harvest in his ministry and in his life, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. 
Praise God. All right. You want to come forward or the bulls are going to come around. Please drop your seat. And if you are sowing virtually, please go ahead and do the same. All right, a few announcements before we get going. Um, as always, our week starts with prayer. So tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock, we're going to be praying. Please join us virtually on our prayer line. And then tomorrow evening, 8 o'clock, Legacy Men, we're going to be together on Zoom. I tell you, our last meeting was so powerful. I, I must say you guys were on fire. We, we had so many men join us. Uh, Brother Hill was, you know, he was on fire. Brother Lewis and all the great men that joined. We had such an amazing time. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to we getting together again this Monday, tomorrow at 8 o'clock. So please uh, uh, don't, don't miss out. It's going to be awesome. I look forward to it. One of the things I remember we were talking, Brother Fidelis, in that meeting was we had a lot of back and forth, you know. And one thing that Brother Kevin said, in fact, he, he led a meeting that day. He said, until I came to America and joined Love Legacy, I didn't know that church members had to be sent text. That is Sunday, get ready for church, or it's Wednesday, get on Zoom. He said, what, what is that? He said, what is that? He said, Apostle, I go to work five times in a week, and my boss never texts me that it's time to go to work. And he was so frustrated. But I, I pray that based on the teaching today, we are maturing. We don't need reminders to come into the house of God. He said something so powerful that day. He said, throughout my journey with God in Nigeria, there has never been once when my pastor texted me that it's Sunday. He says, I know it's Sunday. And on Sunday, I got to go to church and hear the word of God. It's a mark of what? Maturity. Amen. And so tomorrow evening, 8 o'clock, men, let's get online on Zoom and let's have a great time of fellowship. Wednesday, we're going to have a powerful Bible interactive service. The time is 7.30. Please make sure you join us. Amen. And then on Friday, we are back praying uh, at the corporate level. The time is going to be 7.30 and it's also on Zoom. And of course, on Saturday, we come together starting our weekend with prayer 6 o'clock in the morning. Please join in. And if you are joining in the upcoming class, Legacy Life University, our next course is Kingdom Principles. It's a course I want to encourage every single one of us to take. It's going to start this Saturday, 9 o'clock. It's going to be an eight-week program, one hour each Saturday, 9 to 10 in the morning. Please join in. You will definitely, through this teaching, be empowered to fulfill your purpose. Amen. And of course, next Sunday, we're going to be back to our campuses, and I encourage you to come and don't come alone. Invite somebody. Now, next week, Saturday, is that our outreach here in Middletown? That is correct. All right. So next week, Saturday, we are back on the floor, on, on the field, excuse me, to evangelize to our community. And every single one of us here is going to represent. I tell you, our last outreach was powerful. It was powerful. I mean, I can confidently tell you that this year, our Middletown church has increased up to 50%. And it is not just because we sat down and prayed and hoped that the angels would bring the souls. We had to go out. And that is why God is giving us a theme for this year. It's called Community Impact. So if you are a member of this church, you are not going into the community in any way. You are not joining us to do anything in terms of going into the community to evangelize. You've not yet embraced the vision. You are asleep. Tap somebody and say, brother, are you asleep? Now ask them, ask them and let them answer you. Are you asleep? Now I'm just thinking, today I have Ja and Mark. They came to my home this week and I said, I want you guys to join us in service. And they showed up. I could have kept quiet. They are in church today. Let's put our hands together for them. Let's see you up. Ja and Mark, it's good to have you guys, man. It took me a minute to recognize who you are with all those scarf and stuff on your head. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so very much for coming. And today we also have in the house the mother of our sister Beth. Are you not excited? And not only that Beth is in the house with baby too. The entire clan is in the house. Let's come on, let's celebrate them better. 
Amen. Pastor Linda ministered to them and they came to church. I'm talking to you about how evangelism works. We went knocking on doors at Tall Oaks. Sister April is one of the products that came out of it. <laughs> Brother Richard right there. We went out on Carnival of Love. He's been coming to church as a result of that. Evangelism works. Stop sleeping. Amen. Amen. Bible says you must bear fruit. And not only that, he says, I want my house to be filled. He wants to see souls born again. And if that is not your number one priority as a child of God, you've missed out. I'm sorry for you, but you have missed out. That is God's heartbeat. In case you don't understand, when you go to heaven, that is the only thing that causes heaven to rejoice. When one soul gets born again. In case you don't know, that is God's number one agenda in heaven. And not only that, in hell. In hell also, that is their number one agenda. You know the rich man that died and went to hell? When he got to hell and he saw the good things that are happening to people in heaven, he says, send somebody to my house. To do what? To evangelize. Even in hell. Heaven and hell, they want evangelism. You are here, you don't want evangelism. No, you, you are lost. So I pray this Saturday, as many of you that can will show up here. And join us at 12 o'clock as we go into the community. You know, last evangelism, Brother Lewis joined us for the first time. Brother Lewis also is new. But he came. And he was my partner. I said, I'm going to go with him. Originally, I, I made, I think, Minister Judy or somebody go with you. I said, no, I want to have him. And so, it's traditional. In the door, we knock. If nobody opens the door, we just lay hands and pray. So, I did that a few times. And I said, Brother Lewis, why don't you do it? He said, no, I'm not ready for this. Then we knocked on a door of a young lady who opened. And I said, the lady said, I thought you guys were the, uh, what did she say? It's like she was expecting delivery because she had just moved into the apartment. And then the lady is like, oh, I thought you guys were the delivery guy. I said, no. And then she says something. She said, I just moved in here and I'm looking for a church. And we went knocking on a door. I, I tell you what, that impacted Brother Lewis. From that moment, he was praying on doors. He was laying hands and praying on doors. It doesn't take much to do it. Some of you must leave the Christian walk and become examples to others so others can learn. Where are our priorities? This is the main thing God has called us to do as believers. He says, if you love me, you will do my will. And his will is that we go into the world and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Glory to God. Well, I have some pictures to show you. Daniel, are you ready with the pictures? I want to show you some pictures. So many, many years ago, a young man left the shores of Ghana and came to America, as you can see. Many, many years ago. Some of you who are in the spirit would identify that young man. He came to school. He educated himself, did so well for himself. And after a while, he realized that it's not good for a man to be alone. And so he decided to go back home to find a woman. And he went in and found this beautiful woman in Ghana. And guess what they did? Look at how gorgeous the woman looks. A young woman. And what did they do? He said, I want to marry you. And the moment he said that, look at the smile on the lady's face. Isn't she cute? And so they tied and now they got married and look at all the blessings that follow. Because the Bible says, any man that findeth a woman findeth a good thing. Not a man finding a man or a woman finding a man. A, a woman finding a woman. The Bible says, any man that findeth a woman finds a good thing and obtains favor. Look at, look at all the blessings. So they went, you know, traditionally you have to send your family to go ask whether they will allow you to marry. Go back to that picture. So whilst, why are you rushing to go back? This one here. The family was asking the hand of the woman in marriage. And, you know, that young man wasn't sure whether this thing was going to work out. You could see the way he's thinking deep. <laughs> well, eventually they work out. You know, they accepted all the dowry and everything. And so they got married and all the blessings. Let's, let's go. They got married. The family became a blessing. Keep going. The Lord blessed them with a beautiful family. Look at all the kids. Is that Grislin? That is actually Theresia and Paul. Is that correct? Yeah. And that's a young man over there, happily married with his beautiful bride and children. God bless them with three kids. Keep going. 
And then, of course, you could see the kids growing up. This is still Tracy and Paul, right? Yes. All right. <laughs> Keep going. And look at where they've been for the past 40 years. Today is exactly 40 years these two people got married. And I felt we should celebrate Minister Ike. And I mean, Minister Ike and Sister Margaret. 40 years of marriage. Marriage still works. And so today we celebrate you, Minister Ike and Sister Margaret. We want you to come forward. We want to pray and ask God's blessings over you and your family. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate them with a clap. We must celebrate marriage, especially in our world today. We must celebrate family in our world today. Amen. <laughs> Come on, let's all rise up. We're closing anyway. Let's stretch put our hands towards them and bless them. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you for this couple. Lord, indeed, it is you at the center of it all that has brought them far. And so, Lord, we just want to thank you. I want the kids to join us. I want Grace Lynn and um, Teresa to join us. Paul is not here, but the daughters are here. Father, we thank you so very much for the blessing of family. Indeed, you've been so good to this family. You have blessed them with all manner of blessings. You have given them godly children, children that have found their purpose, children that are walking in their destiny. And Lord, we know your word declares that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. And so Lord, just as you have brought them this far, we know you would also bring them to a good completion. We ask for good health. We ask for longevity. We ask for prosperity. We ask for peace of mind. We ask for healing. We ask for all manner of blessings and grace upon the Bosom Pin family in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that the family both near and wide would encounter the goodness and the blessings of the Lord. In Jesus mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Come on somebody go ahead and celebrate. The goodness of the Lord. We want to say congratulations. Come on, let's congratulate them. Congratulations. God bless you. God bless you. you may take your seat. Amen. Whilst you remain standing, we are going to share the grace. And please don't be in a rush out. We have a lot of food, a lot of drinks and beverages at a lower level. We want to go downstairs and celebrate with each other and have a great time celebrating this wonderful couple and what God is doing in our lives. Amen. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you at the lower level.